It's time for the Daily Stand-Up Podcast presented by Agile Dad with your host, Lee Henson. Without any further ado, let's get started. Have you ever had someone say just, oh, just put it in a backlog. Just put it in a backlog. We can, we can deal with it there. Just throw that in a backlog. Well, guess what? I want to talk about the costly side effects of an oversized product backlog. There are eight concepts that we're going to cover, and uh, these are critical side effects that create anti-patterns and prevent people from doing a really good job. So uh, let, let's go Let's go with something that's a little more on a technical side. And uh, well, not necessarily technical, but it, um, so... An oversized backlog encourages early optimization. So when you have a bulging product backlog, it can lead to premature optimization as the team may feel compelled to design systems or workflows that anticipate the completion of future backlog items. So oftentimes they're going so far ahead, they're building unnecessary complexity and contributing to waste if uh, things later just get deprioritized or don't need to be built. So the goal here should be simplicity, making sure you're maximizing the amount of work not done, value number eight of the 12. Uh, So there you go. I'm sorry, value number 10 of the 12 uh, values from the Agile Manifesto. All right. So how about number seven? Number number seven. Number two. Man, it's one of those days. How about false sense of security? A giant product backlog provides uh, everyone with a false sense of security. They feel like there's an illusion of control, that everything's well planned out and well thought out, that um, we don't need to do any more discovery or learning, that we're all set. And we should constantly be trying to do discovery and learning. Um, Because if we just feel like, oh, we have this giant product backlog, everything's going to be fine, that could lead to us really falling away. Uh, Okay, so let's go to number three. Uh, a giant product backlog inhibits innovation. When people see a huge product backlog, it can unintentionally stifle any creative energy within a team. So the lengthy list puts on a culture of, hey, let's just check out the box and get these things done, where the team focuses more on completing whatever tasks they need to complete uh, instead of um, you know focusing on contributing ideas and insights. So I, I think that sometimes... Um, when the team feels constrained or perceive that there's no new room for ideas, it limits the, the, their ability to be creative and have creative problem-solving skills, and it limits their ability to be innovative. So that's kind of interesting. All right, next we're going to talk about the crowding out effect. So if you have a giant product backlog, it's, you know, it, it can inadvertently discourage stakeholders and team members from contributing their ideas. People are like, oh, wow, there's a lot of work to be done. I don't want to add to the pile, or I I don't think my additional input is going to add much value, when that's not necessarily true. How about this one? An oversized product backlog can damage stakeholder engagement. When your bloated backlog comes to light, and it it becomes a significant challenge regarding effective communication with stakeholders. The vast number of items makes it difficult for stakeholders to even comprehend a plan, to figure out progress, to figure out the order of priority, and to try to align or misalign where they feel their idea should fit inside of that whole debacle. So coming in at number six, we have um, a huge product backlog leads to analysis paralysis. This one should have been number one. Um, A huge product backlog can cause people to just look at the sheer volume and become overwhelmed leading to indecision and delay. The team might spend excessive time evaluating, prioritizing, and reprioritizing items, which detracts from their capacity to focus on actual product development improvement. So uh, the excess of choices makes them slow down in decision-making processes. It makes it difficult for the team to determine whether they uh, need to start something new or focus on what's next. Ultimately, it just slows down your entire project. Okay, so coming at number seven, we're getting close here, is a sunk cost fallacy. Hallelujah. Um, A large product backlog can lead to sunk cost fallacy. It it can continue to help you uh, with refining the backlog, but when it comes to prioritizing each item and trying to figure out where things fit, people lean in and say, oh, we've invested so much time and energy in this, we just need to finish, rather than saying, hey, let's wrap this up. It's not providing the proper value. And then, of course, number eight, the finale, the big Pumbaa, Having a giant product backlog encourages wastes. So an oversized backlog fosters waste by investing time in items that may never, ever be developed. And if we're doing continual discovery and if we're trying to figure things out, then you might not ever see the light of day of those items again. 
So my thing that I encourage people to do is uh, limit width. If you limit your work in progress, that's going to help you with uh, eliminating the waste and it's going to help you with controlling these these things and it's also going to help you with saying no to certain items so you can get your backlog size under control and organize your teams and your workload around the things that are most critical that need to be done remember we're talking about urgency not necessarily importance because we base everything on importance then everything is going to be important but if we base on urgency we'll discover which things are the most urgent and go from there Okay, that's going to do it. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have a topic you want us to discuss, learn more at AgileDad.com. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, we encourage you to stay healthy, stay well, and stay agile, my friends. Until next time, do take care.